Give to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Lord, I really am not. Our Heavenly Father, here we are, Lord, once again, saying thank you for a day that was not promised to us. Thank you for laying the ground laws for our Heavenly Father, and thank you for allowing us to open our eyes this morning. Thank you for the activities that God allowed for us. We thank you for the angels that camped all around our bed as we slept or slept. Thank you for taking us into down these dangerous highways. And our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for never losing us nor forsaking us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your many, many chances, God. We weren't worthy, but you gave them to us anyway. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your son. And Heavenly Father, we ask that on this evening that everybody knows that you are the reason for this evening. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you will bless somebody somewhere that may not have family, may not have gifts, may not have anything. Just watch over them and bless them, Father. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the sick and shut in because his name is Hunter. You know all about it, Lord. Just touch and heal their bodies from this point. And, oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to touch Miss Bobby and all the other sick that are here in this church. And, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just continue to watch over each and every one of your children. Take them the way you would have them to go. And, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless this church one by one and bless us all together. And, oh, gracious Father, we ask that you would just uh, watch over those that may be on the way here and, that, and those that may not get, get here. And, oh, Heavenly Father, we ask all these things in the daughter's name, Jesus.
shouts amen for the choir. Hallelujah. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful time. That's what we come to celebrate, amen. We come to celebrate little baby Jesus. Look at somebody say, it's just good to celebrate together. Amen. Everybody's looking so good in their red, black, got some green. Amen. Thank God for this time of the year. Amen. This is a joyful time of the year. I know there's a lot of depression going on, and a lot of folks, is, they're a little depressed. They can't get what they want to buy, and they can't receive what they want to receive. And there's a lot of folks depressed because they money's not looking like they want it to look, but I still got Jesus. And as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Ain't that all right? Hallelujah. And so we're just so thankful and so grateful for uh, the Lord allowing us another opportunity to be here one more time. Amen. Amen. We didn't come for a funeral today, but we came to celebrate. Some of y'all were celebrating last night. Some of y'all was a little bit louder than what you are right now. Amen. Some of y'all had your pajamas on. Amen. At the family gathering. Amen. So let us appear to let. <laughs> y'all, let's, let's celebrate today and let's give him all the glory. Amen. Amen for the things that he has done. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Amen. I want to thank God for life, health, and strength. And there's somebody else that's got a reason to thank God as well. It ain't all about what we think we ought to have, but it's we thank God for what he gives us. Grace, mercy. He gives us the activities of our limbs. He gives us a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. Amen. I want everybody to stand on your feet as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Thanking God for what he's done and what he's doing and what he's going to do. We're going to continue to be in prayer. Sister Bobby and Brother Howard this morning, let us continue to pray for the Pettis, Sister Iristine and Brother Brother CJ, amen. And let's continue to pray for Brother Don. Who else do we need to be praying for? Brother Seacrest, Brother Seacrest, Brother Seacrest Cooper, Phyllis. Dorothy family, who? Penny. Brother Don? Yeah. Michaela, okay. Amen. Let's just remember one another. Amen. It's good to call out names and be specific to God because God is a, spe a specific God. He he answers prayer like we ask for it. Amen. Amen. And so we want to lift up these names this morning to the Lord that God will continue to bless in a special way. Come on, lift it up all over the building. Oh, thank you. Lift it up, say you've been so good. Oh, my, 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 my. Every time I turn around, you've been oh, so good. Yeah, you've been. Oh, oh. Oh, 
to thank. One more, lift it up, say, you made a way, you made. Somebody ought to wave your hands and tell him, you made a way for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for waking us up early this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for allowing us to have a roof over our head, a bed to sleep in, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. Thank you. We're not just going to take the little things for granted, but we want to thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. Thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for the sight that we see. Thank you for the activities in our limbs. Thank you for we realize that if it had not been for you, we don't know where we would be right now. Oh God, we're lifting up every name that's been called. We're lifting up every family that's been called. We're lifting up every household that is represented here. We're lifting up every church door that stands open in your name. We're lifting up every leader that's standing proclaiming the birth of Jesus Christ on today. In the name of Jesus, wave your healing hands of mercy over those that are sick right now. Heal in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, somebody's down and troubled in their minds. You know how to be a mind regulator and a heart fixer. Oh, God, somebody's walking with their head hung down. And we know that you are a lifter of our head. In the name of Jesus, touch us right now. One by one and touch us all together. Oh, God, we, we know that. Where there's unity, there's strength. And we realize that when strength and unity come together, the enemy don't like it. So we plead the blood of Jesus over this church and every church that stands open in your name. We plead the blood of Jesus over every family that's striving to do your will. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over every young person in the, in the building. We plead the blood of Jesus over every person with some health issues right now. In the name of Jesus, touch right now like only you can touch. You're a doctor that's above every doctor. You're medicine that's above all medicine. The Bible says by your stripes we are healed. Move like you know how to move. Bless like you know how to bless. Oh, God, forgive us of our sins and renewing us that right spirit. Whatever you do, don't take away your joy from us. We need you like we never needed you before. We need you because sometimes the going gets tough and sometimes the hills get high. Sometimes the valleys get a little low. Sometimes our way gets dark, but we're going to hold on to your unchanging hand. Your hand never changes. Some of our families may change. Some of our friends may change. Some of our relationships have changed. But you are God that never changed. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we lift our hands and tell you thank you, thank you for every up and every down that we've had. We say thank you, thank you. 
for every storm that you brought us through. We say thank you for every mountain you brought us over. We say thank you for every valley you brought us through. We say thank you for, for every door that you've opened. Thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Now, God, bless the rest of this service. Let it be what you would have it to be. And Holy Spirit, fill this place with your glory. Don't allow us to leave the same way we came. But allow us to leave a different way. Bless this choir. Bless this music ministry. Bless those, the waiting congregation. And then, God, allow me to stand to proclaim your word in Jesus' name. We thank you for every, everything that you have already done. We're thanking you for what you are going to do right now. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do down the road. Thank you for the blessings that are in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. from our choir, and after they have finished, we'll be ready for our message. Amen? Say amen as they come. Come on, give them a hand.
Merry Christmas from St. Mary Mass Choir. that all right? Yeah, they shocking us every week, ain't they? Something different, amen. Some of y'all remember them old temptations. Amen. We, we had something better this morning. Then this morning, they both were singing. Ain't that all right? <laughs> let's, let's focus on God's word this morning. My grandmama would say singing is all right. You need the word of God to make it. Singing has a way of lifting heavy burdens, but it is the word of God that will convict us to live better than to do what the Lord would have us to do. Grab your Bibles. got a smart device with the Bible on it, raise it up. Paperback. Amen. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer. My life has been made better after hearing the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Somebody shout, I love the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Marisa's here this morning. Amen. I didn't know she was here. He alone is worthy. Come on. For he alone is worthy. Oh, yes, he is. Say it. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. 
the Lord. Let all the people, let all the people praise him. Let all the people, let all the people praise him. him there is no failure come on in him there is no fear oh yes in him there is no failure in him there is forever will praise your name forever will praise your name forever will praise your name adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. and help me say, oh, cry, cry the Lord, oh, cry the Lord, cry. Chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Everybody who's been in church any length of time, you know this story. We're not going to bring anything new, but we're just going to recap what we've already learned. Amen? Starting at verse 2 of Luke chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed 
every one unto his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And it was so that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. As you go into your seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, make room for him. Amen. Make room for Jesus. That's what we're going to talk about. Amen. Make room for Jesus. I need your prayers because preaching and praying goes together. Amen. Amen. During this Christmas season, most of you have already had your house decorated with all the beautiful Christmas lights and all of the beautiful decorations that you wanted to use. Most of you have had your Christmas tree decorated probably since Thanksgiving. And now you have so many Christmas presents under the tree. But can I encourage you this morning, unless you have made room for Jesus, your Christmas holiday season is incomplete. Most of you have already brought most of the finest gifts that you could find for your loved ones for Christmas Day. And some are still trying to go to the stores after church, scrambling just to find anything. Anything would do just fine. Well, some of us, we love to sing those Christmas carols and those great songs of the season, but can I tell you that you cannot have a true Christmas unless you've made room for Jesus. Some of you have already gone to so many Christmas parties you can't count on. You've ate a lot of Christmas cookies this season, Christmas cakes you've already indulged in, and some of y'all have had the drink for the season. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But still, you cannot have a true Christmas until you've made room for Jesus. Can I get a witness? Some of you plan to travel on Christmas Day, and some of you are going far. Some of you are going near and wide to be with relatives, friends, and loved ones. And you may have even invited guests to your own house with the dinner aroma spilling the house and people coming in wearing red, white, and green clothing. But can I tell you that you still cannot have a true Christmas unless you have made room for Jesus. There's nothing wrong, my brothers and sisters, with decorations. And there's nothing wrong with pretty lights and Christmas trees. There's nothing wrong with decorating, amen, your amen workspace at work. There's nothing wrong with buying all the gifts that you want and receiving the gifts that, amen, that you get. There's nothing wrong with singing Christmas songs. There's nothing wrong with going to Christmas parties, eating and drinking Christmas goodies. Nothing is wrong with none of it. But it's not complete until you first make room 
for Jesus. For Jesus, my brothers and sisters, uh, ought to be the focal point of our Christmas celebrations. Uh, and can I tell you that if Jesus Christ uh, is the focal point of our celebrations, then there's some things uh, that we just won't do at the Christmas celebration. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, uh, because if Jesus is the focal point uh, of our celebrations, uh, there ought to be more love shown at the celebration. If Jesus is the, the focal point of our celebration, there ought to be more kindness and care that is shown toward one another. If Jesus is the focal point of our celebrations, we ought to have more gentleness and peace and harmony with one another during this season. If Jesus is the focal point of our celebrations. We ought not mind sharing with one another and praising God for his son he sent through a virgin birth. Uh, can I tell you this morning, you ought to make room for Jesus. Now the question that has arise. Uh, uh, why should we make Jesus the focal point of our celebration? Why should we make amen room for Jesus uh, during this holiday season? The reason why Jesus should be the focal point of our Christmas celebrations is because during this holiday season, this is the time uh, that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now there are going to be some that might argue with you to amen debate with you about the day that Jesus was actually born. Somebody might say it wasn't December 25th. Somebody may say it wasn't in December. But can I tell y'all this morning, St. Mary, the important importance is not simply knowing when he was born, but just knowing and acknowledging that he was born. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was born in a city called Bethlehem. He was born in a manger where all the animals slept because the scripture says there was no room for him, Mary, and Joseph in the hotels. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The hotels were filled. The motels were filled. The five-star, amen, hotels were filled because everybody came to give an account and pay their taxes. And so there was no room for them. And you probably think right now that that is a terrible thing, amen, that nobody made room for Jesus, amen. And Jesus had to be born in a stable and laid in a manger. That is a terrible thing. But if we were to be honest on this morning, there are some things that we do right now that we don't make room for him in our lives. Jesus no doubt would have been gladly Amen. To have somebody's home open to him. Jesus would have been gladly for somebody to provide for him. Amen. A better space for him to be born. But somehow, some way, we make the same mistake right now. The situation for Jesus today is even more sadder because uh, most of us still do not make room for him in our own personal lives. Uh, uh, for some uh, reason, uh, some of us are so busy trying to get caught up in making a living for ourselves, uh, trying to take care of everything that we can try to take care of. Uh, and the truth of the matter is uh, Jesus has helped you, uh, amen, in your life far more than anybody else. Uh, that, that's reason enough to give make room for him. 
some, for somebody, it's fear. Fear of what Jesus might think. It's fear of what Jesus might say. It's fear of what Jesus might do if he were invited and even allowed access into our lives and find us, amen, doing what we've been doing. This fear is blameless because Jesus, watch this, does not wreck things because Jesus comes to improve things. They need to know Jesus truly loves them and desires the best for them and he opens his arms to us every day to receive us just as we are. And for some reason, some just lacked the knowledge. They didn't know about Jesus and his first love. And for these people, you are the answer to their question. You can share the wonderful story of God's love. You can be Jesus' hands and feet in somebody else's life. You can be the example of Jesus that somebody that might not know him. Why should we make room for Jesus in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20? The Bible says, look, I have been standing at the door and I am constantly knocking. And if anyone hears me calling him uh, and opens the door, I'll come in and fellowship with him and he with me. In other words, Jesus is simply persistent and he still reaches out in love, expecting that that someday people will see him as he truly is, overcome by their busyness, overcome by their fears and ignorance, and enthusiastically will invite him to the center of their lives. Jesus don't like to be ignored. Jesus does not like being put in an inferior place. Surely Jesus would like to be accepted and appreciated. Amen. Jesus would like for everybody to make him central one. Everybody to consider him the creator and sustainer of all. Who knows more and can do more with you than Jesus Christ? Jesus, his birth was special because he was born of a virgin woman by the power of the Holy Ghost. That is the special attention that Jesus' birth was not an act of Joseph and Mary having a type of sexual relationship with each other, but rather it was the act of the Holy Ghost uh, coming upon Mary and overshadowing her, and she becomes pregnant with the Son of God uh, without having a sexual relationship with any man. But when the Holy Ghost came upon Mary to impregnate her with Jesus. This was an act of God, the Father, sending his son Jesus to save a world from their sins. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says it like this. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6 says it like this. For unto us a, a child is born. For unto us a, a son is giving. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called wonderful uh, counselor, the mighty God, uh, the everlasting father, and uh, the prince of peace. Uh, John chapter 1, uh, starting at verse 1 and 2, uh, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, uh, and the word was God, and the word uh, was with God, uh, and the same was in the beginning with God. 
God and the word became flesh uh, through the virgin birth of a virgin woman by the power of the Holy Ghost and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory and the glory of the only for begotten of the father full of grace and truth Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says it like this but when the fullness of time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And because Jesus was born uh, in a virgin birth of a virgin woman by the power of the Holy Ghost, when he was born, he was born in a sinless nature. You see, when we were born, we were all born with a sinful nature because of our birth was wrought by man. And because our birth was wrought by man, all of us was born in sin because man is a sinner. But because Jesus' birth was wrought by the Holy Ghost and not by man, he was born a sinless man. He was born in a sinless nature. And because Jesus was born with a sinless nature, he was able to be the savior of the whole world. How could he do it unless he was without sin? A rightful Amen. Uh, so Jesus was without sin. And because Jesus was born without sin, he rightfully was called Emmanuel, which means he is God with us. He is rightfully called wonderful uh, because he is uh, uh, he is called uh, a wonderful counselor. He is rightfully called the mighty God. He is rightfully called the everlasting father because Jesus was born without sin. He was able to heal those that were crippled and make them walk. Because Jesus was born without sin, he was able to calm the raging sea. Be because Jesus was born without sin, he was able to walk on the water. Because Jesus was born without sin, he was able to raise the dead back to life again. This Jesus, my Jesus, your Jesus, our Jesus, because he was born without sin, he was able to save us from the guttermost to the uttermost and give us salvation that we didn't deserve. And if you have a meaning for Christmas this year, you ought to make room for him. When you make room for Jesus, you have more peace in your life. When you make room for Jesus, you a man have more joy in your life. When you make room for Jesus, you have the everlasting love. When you make room for Jesus, uh, you have mercy that is brand new every day. When you have make room for Jesus. Uh, you can have victory over, amen, every one of your circumstances. When you make room for Jesus, uh, you begin to experience eternal life. When you make room for Jesus, you have the salvation that only God can give. And when you make room for Jesus, you don't have to make room for him just on December 25th. But you ought to make room for him every day of your life. I'm talking about from January to December. You ought to make room for Jesus. I'm talking about every day 
way and everywhere. You ought to make room for Jesus. I'm talking about in your home, on your job, in your marriage, and everywhere you go, you ought to make room. Yeah. You ought to make room for Jesus. Somebody needs to make room for him on Monday. Somebody needs to make room for him on Tuesday. Somebody needs to make room for him on Wednesday. Somebody needs to make room for him on Thursday. Somebody needs to make room for him on Friday. Somebody needs to make room on Saturday. And somebody needs to make room even on Sunday morning when the game's about to come on. When your car needs to be washed. When the fish are biting in in the water, ain't the Lord all right? Say yeah, ain't the Lord all right? And so when we make room for him, I see y'all done got tired. I'm getting ready to wind this thing up. But when you make room for him, you can come into his house with your hand lifted up, saying thank you for sending your son. Thank you for sending little baby Jesus in Bethlehem. Thank you for watching over that family in Bethlehem. I know they didn't have no room in the inn. I know they didn't have a five-star hotel. Oh, ain't it all right? Somebody made room for Jesus. Jesus, he was born in a manger. Jesus, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Jesus, he was standing there. Little, little old baby with joy in his heart. And I'm so grateful that somebody made room. Somebody made room to have Jesus in their life. And I came to testify, first given unto the God who's the head of my life. To the pastor members and friends, I tell the Lord, thank you for saving my soul. I tell the Lord, thank you for making me whole. I tell him thank you for showering down so many blessings upon my life. Ain't the Lord all right? I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. But Lord, Lord, he let me live on to see one more day. I'm thankful and I'm grateful that Jesus, he was born. We're celebrating his birth. But I got to tell y'all another story about Jesus. He came through 42 generations. He came down and was born like you and I. But he had a sinless nature. I see Jesus walking around on this earth. He was making the blind see. He was making the lame walk. He was making the dumb talk. He raised the dead. Ain't the Lord all right? Say yeah. I said, ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Jesus, one Friday evening, he took a whole ragged cross and they put him on cone, walked him up Calvary's hill, marched him up Calvary. They nailed his hands, they nailed his feet, and they pierced him in the side. Out came blood and water. Water! to wash me from my sins, blood to redeem me of my sins. Ain't he all right? Put him in a bar or two. Stay there Friday. Stay there Saturday. But early, 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 
Sunday morning. He got up with all power in the palm of his hand. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. But rising, he justified me, freeing me forever. One day, he's coming back. Oh, what a glorious day. Thank God that somebody made room for Jesus. Make room for him. You ain't got to wait till tomorrow. Start today. I think this world would be a better place if we would explain to our children why we really celebrate this season. I think this world would be a better place if we talked about him more and then instead of talking about everybody else more. Make room for him. Some of us making room for all the pies and cakes that we've been making. I heard them the other night, baby. I started cooking last week. Make room for him. Before you open up a gift, you ought to tell the Lord thank you. Because he was the best gift that you could ever got. Songwriter said, Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't know what he's done for you, but I know what he's been to me. He's been my way maker. He's been my way provider. He's been my company keeper. He's been my light in darkness. When I needed him, all I had to do was call him. Some of y'all have sent me the voicemail. Who is that? That ain't nobody but pastor. But I can call on him and he'll answer. It may be morning, noon, or night, but he'll answer. Won't he answer? Late in the midnight hour. Sometimes your body be racking with pain. And Jesus the answer send you a little relief. Make room for him. I love the Christmas season, but we ought to make room for him. And it starts right here. Point to yourself right here in your heart. It's in my heart. <laughs> That's what we used to say. To serve the Lord. I ain't going to see some of y'all till Easter. So I'm going to tell you right now, make room for him. Every day of your life. Because every day with Jesus, it gets sweeter than the day before. Make room for him. Hallelujah. Everybody standing on your feet. Hallelujah, I believe. If there's one, you ought to come. Down this aisle while the blood is running warm. 
in your vein. I won't sing my song because I believe that if I watch God do it, God is going to do everything in his own timing. Listen, I believe the storm will soon be over. I believe the rain is gone away. I, I believe I can make it through it. Oh, I believe somebody ought to help me say it's already done. Oh, oh, oh. help me say it one more time. Say it. it's already done. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Listen. My God is a healer. Yes, he is. I believe I will survive. I believe that my God is a healer. Whoa, I believe. Somebody help me say Listen, I believe God's going to do it, do it for you. I believe it's going to get better, better for, come on, help me say it. I believe I, God's going to do it. Yes, he will do it for you. I believe I I believe it's gonna get better. Come on, help me say it. Whoa, I believe. I be God's gonna fix it. God's gonna fix it. Yes, He will fix it for I believe. I believe it's gonna get better. Well, break it down. Now I need y'all to help me encourage your neighbor. Because there's your neighbor sitting next to you, but they got a smile on their face, but you don't know what's going on on the inside of them. They might have a frown in their heart. And I want you to help me encourage your neighbor to help lighten the load and encourage them and lift up, lift them up and, and inspire them to let them know that everything is going to be all right. Are y'all going to help me? I want you to help me, say, look at your neighbor in the eye, and I want you to tell them this. Well, say God's going to do it. Some of y'all didn't look at nobody. Come on, look at somebody and tell them this. I said, God's going to fix it. Oh, my, 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 my. Look at somebody and tell them this. Say, God's going to do it. Oh, at least you can tell me. Come on and tell somebody, well, say God's going to fix it. Now look at somebody else across the room. Look at somebody else, and I want you to encourage them. Look at them and tell them, it's going to get better. It's got to get better. It's going to get better. It's got to get better. Come on. It's going to get better. It's got to get better. It's going to get better. Said it's got to get better. Say yeah. 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 Say yeah. 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 Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, I believe. Yeah, I receive it. Say yeah. Yeah, one more time and say yeah. Lift your hands and say it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I believe. Storm will soon be over. 
over. I believe the rain has gone away. I believe I can make it through it. Stay right there. <laughs> I can make it through it. Woo. I can make it through. I know it's rough right now, but uh, I can make it through it. Yes, sir. I can make it through it. I know it's dark in your life. I can make it through it. Yeah. I can make it through it. Whoa, I believe. Somebody ought to help me say, said it's already, said it's already, said it's already, already done. Yeah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's already done. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that every person will leave here believing that they're going to make room for you in every aspect of their life. Let them leave here knowing that without you, there will be no Christmas. Let them realize that you are the reason for this holiday season. Thank you for every prayer that you've answered. Thank you for every victory you've given us. Thank you for every solution to every problem. And in Jesus' name, we claim it by faith that it's already done. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout like you got the victory. Come on, make some noise like you got the victory. says if you take care of his house, he'll take care of yours. Amen. Amen. So we're getting ready to give. Amen. Sister Betty is coming. Let's hear from her. in the hands of God.
thank you so much for being obedient. Amen. And Amen. Uh, let me remind us, we're getting ready to receive our Christmas basket, so let me remind us on uh, December the 31st. Make sure and see if I get it right this time. December 31st, we're going to celebrate, we're going to have a New Year's uh, Eve celebration um, at the Mount Olive Baptist Church in Winona. And uh, our choir, our area one mass choir will host Saturday night. And let me tell y'all something, we're going to be in for a treat on next Sunday afternoon. Amen. So Mary, St. Mary, give yourselves a hand. We had 10 choir members there last Tuesday. We had more than anybody. And I was so proud, Brother Teddy, that our church showed up and showed out. So on next Sunday at 6 o'clock, y'all be with us at Mount Olive for a New Year's Eve celebration. It's going to be at 6, not 9 o'clock. Amen? At 6 o'clock, we'll be there. And we're going to have some great preaching and some great singing at that service. You don't want to miss it. Um, second Sunday in January is going to be our family and friends day. Amen? Amen. And I, I, I've been spreading the news and spreading the word. People are excited. Amen. If you don't have no friends, you got to just a few weeks to make some. Amen? Go get you some friends. And invite them to come to family and friends today. We're asking that every family, uh, you, along with your family and friends, nobody would come in under a hundred. Amen. Amen. This will help us. Amen. In that effort. All right. Uh, what else? Huh? You got another solo? Oh, I'm sorry. Step out today, didn't you? Y'all missed it. Your little cousins missed it today. Y'all y'all ain't seen him. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, he wanna sing something? Oh. All right, are they ready? All right, I think some people got some gifts. Okay. All right, Sister Ryan. Anybody else? All right. Who else? <laughs> Amen. All right. Sister Quita. Sister Quita is taking over Brother Ronald's job. Y'all know he would have been bringing them baskets in here. All right. The babies got something. Say they got something for you. Okay, they got some cups, okay, ain't this something, all right, you got to have a Christmas outfit on, all right, they know who to give it to, don't they? Ain't that something? That's all right. 